Welcome to the History of Simple Things, where we delve into the fascinating history behind the little things that shape our world. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, and today we're diving into something that's probably sitting right on your kitchen counter, yet it plays such an important role in your daily life salt. It's in our food, it's in our bodies, heck, it's even in our oceans. But have you ever wondered how salt is actually made? Where does it come from? How does it go from the sea or ground into that little shaker? Well, stick around because we're going to break it all down in today's video. Before we get into the nitty-gritty of how salt is made, let's quickly talk about what salt actually is. In its simplest form, salt is a mineral composed mainly of sodium chloride. It's one of the most essential substances on Earth, not just for humans, but for animals and even plants. Salt doesn't just make your French fries taste better. It's crucial for life itself. Sodium, one of the components of salt, helps our bodies regulate water balance and nerve function. So, in a way, salt is literally helping your body stay alive. But salt isn't just important for biology. It has an incredible historical and economic value, too. For centuries, salt was a valuable commodity. Wars were fought over it, cities grew around salt deposits, and at one point, it was even used as currency. That's where the term worth your salt comes from. Salt has been a big deal throughout human history, and it still is today. So, where does salt come from? There are two main ways we get salt, from the sea and from underground salt deposits. First, let's talk about sea salt. As you might have guessed, sea salt is harvested from the ocean. The ocean is incredibly salty and the water has been cycling through the planet's systems for millions of years. As water evaporates from the ocean surface, salt gets left behind. By isolating and evaporating seawater, we can extract that leftover salt and turn it into the crystals we use in our food. Then there's rock salt, which comes from underground deposits. Believe it or not, these underground salt deposits are actually the remains of ancient oceans that dried up millions of years ago. Over time, these dried up seas became layers of salt buried under rock and soil. Today, we can mine that salt, much like we'd mine coal or other minerals. Let's start by breaking down the sea salt production process. It's pretty fascinating because it relies on one of the oldest and simplest techniques out there, evaporation. Humans have been making salt from seawater for thousands of years, and even though technology has improved the process, the fundamental idea is still the same. It all starts with harvesting seawater. The seawater is collected in large, shallow ponds called salt pans. These pans are located in areas where the climate is hot and dry because the key to making sea salt is letting the sun do most of the work. Once the water is in the pans, the sun heats it up and the water slowly starts to evaporate. As the water evaporates, the salt becomes more and more concentrated. Eventually, as most of the water disappears, the salt crystallizes and forms solid salt crystals. At this point, the salt is harvested. Workers rake or scoop up the salt crystals, which are then cleaned and processed. Sometimes the salt is just sun-dried and packaged as is, and this is what we call unrefined sea salt. It has a coarser texture and often contains trace minerals like magnesium, calcium, and potassium, which can give it a slightly different taste. Other times, the salt goes through a refining process where impurities are removed and the crystals are ground into finer grains, resulting in the kind of table salt you see in most homes and restaurants. But the basic idea is this, collect seawater, let it evaporate, and harvest the salt. Now let's switch gears and talk about rock salt. This process is a bit more industrial, but just as interesting. 
Rock salt is typically found in large underground deposits. These deposits were created when ancient oceans evaporated and left behind huge layers of salt, which over millions of years got buried under layers of sediment and rock. Mining rock salt is very similar to mining any other mineral. Workers drill down into the earth and either break apart the salt using explosives or heavy machinery. The chunks of salt are then brought to the surface where they're processed. Once the salt is above ground, it gets crushed into smaller pieces and purified. This might involve removing any non-salt minerals that were mixed in during mining. After purification, the salt can be refined further to create finer grains, or it can be sold as coarser salt crystals. Rock salt tends to have a different texture and mineral composition than sea salt, but chemically, it's still the same sodium chloride. The choice between sea salt and rock salt often comes down to preference and intended use, but the basic building blocks are the same. You might think of salt just as that fine white stuff you sprinkle on your food, but salt comes in so many different forms and has countless uses. There's kosher salt, which is larger and flakier than table salt. It's great for cooking because it dissolves easily and gives you more control when seasoning food. Then there's Himalayan pink salt, which comes from ancient salt deposits in Pakistan. Its pink color comes from trace minerals and it's often marketed as a healthier alternative, though in terms of sodium content, it's pretty much the same as regular salt. But salt isn't just about flavor. It has industrial uses too. Ever seen trucks spreading salt on icy roads in the winter? That's because salt lowers the freezing point of water, helping to melt ice and make roads safer. Salt is also crucial in industries like chemical manufacturing, agriculture, and water treatment. It's a true multitasker. As we move toward a more sustainable future, salt production is also evolving. Traditional sea salt production is already quite eco-friendly because it relies on natural solar evaporation. But some companies are exploring ways to make the process even greener. For example, some salt producers are using renewable energy sources like wind and solar power to pump seawater into salt pans. There are also efforts to minimize the impact of salt mining by reducing waste and preserving natural habitats around salt deposits. Another area of innovation is the development of synthetic salt. This is where scientists are experimenting with creating salt in labs as a way to reduce the environmental impact of traditional salt production. It's still in the early stages, but who knows? Maybe one day, your table salt will come from a laboratory instead of the ocean or the ground. And there you have it, folks. That's how salt is made. Whether it's pulled from the depths of ancient underground seas or harvested from the briny waters of today's oceans. It's one of those everyday substances that we totally take for granted. But once you dig into its history and how it's made, you realize just how vital it is. From the crystals you sprinkle on your popcorn to the rock salt keeping icy roads safe during winter, salt plays an incredible range of roles in our daily lives. And think about it. It's not just about making our food taste better. Salt has been a game changer for civilizations throughout history. It helped preserve food before refrigeration was even a concept, which in turn helped societies store food for longer periods, travel farther, and ultimately develop into the complex world we live in today. Salt has literally been shaping human life for millennia. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.